everyone and welcome. Uh, calling this meeting to order and today's invocation, we're proud to have the Reverend Joseph Arner from uh, Senior Pastor from Thalia United Methodist Church. Welcome. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for this time that you've given us to be together as a people who represent just a portion of this city. And we ask with sincere humility that you would guide this conversation that will happen during the council meeting, that you'd make your presence known to us and that we would make your presence known to the world through the decisions that are made tonight we ask that you give each of our council members your spirit of cooperation and wisdom as they offer themselves in humble service to make this place that we call home better for all who live here, who visit here, and who serve here. We're mindful of those who are hurting tonight who are grieving, who are sick, who don't have a place to call home. And we ask that we would never grow too numb to do whatever we can to improve at least one more life. And so fill us with your peace as we seek to be instruments of that peace in this world. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you. And now we offer a moment of silence for all those who paid the ultimate price uh, for the defense of our nation, and especially recently to the Marines who tragically lost their life in an aircraft uh, accident. Our hearts and prayers go out to them and their family and loved ones. And now the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And Madam Clerk, if we may have a roll call. All present, Your Honor. Okay, do I have a motion for the certification of the closed session? A motion and a second. Mayor, the vote is open. By a vote of 11 to 0, you've certified the closed session to be in accordance with the motion to recess. And if I could have a uh, motion for the approval of the minutes of the informal and formal sessions of August 15, 2023. So moved. Do we have a second? second? Mayor, the vote is open. Councilmember, thank you. By a vote of 11 to 0, you approve the minutes as submitted. Okay, thank you. And now is our pleasure as a council to have the presentations. And our first one is going to be uh, recognized in Disability Voting Rights Week. And Ma Mary Mathena, are you? In here? Oh, hello. Mary, welcome, and first of all, I sincerely thank you for everything you have been doing over the years. You are a marvelous, marvelous example of people given their time and talent to most noble, noble course, course, courses, and I thank you. You're welcome. Okay, whereas there are over 61 million adults with disabilities living in communities throughout the United States, and over 1.6 million adults with disabilities residing in Virginia.
and over 49,000 adults with, Virginia, uh, with disabilities live in the city of Virginia Beach. And whereas over 38 million Americans with disabilities are eligible voters, and whereas the disability community has a critical interest in policies and decisions made and enacted at local, state, and national levels with impact our lives and directly. And whereas making sure people with disabilities have access to voting is essential if these policies are to meet the real needs of people with disabilities in our communities. And whereas voting is one of the surest way for disab the disability community to have a say in the people and policies that impact their communities. Whereas Rev Up Virginia, which stands for Register, Educate, and Vote, Use Your Power is a statewide effort to build the voting power of disabled vet, uh, Virginians. And whereas members of the National Disability Rights Community are organizing the seventh annual Disability Voting Rights Week, September 11th to 15th in 2023, and whereas Rev Up Virginia is planning events across the Commonwealth to celebrate disability voting rights, including the Independence Center on the preceding Saturday, September 9th. Therefore, I, Robert M. Bobby Dyer, Mayor of the City of Virginia Beach, do hereby proclaim September 11th through 15th, 2023, as Disability Voting Rights Week in Virginia Beach. And I call upon all citizens and members within the community agencies, public and private institutions, businesses and schools, in Virginia Beach to also be neighbors helping neighbors during elections for the benefit and betterment of the community so that the future generations can appreciate and further uplift our beloved city of Virginia Beach. So Mary, I thank you and I'm gonna come down now and present you with the proclamation. Please say a couple thank words, you. please. Um, I just wanna thank you. Um, Thank the city of Virginia Beach and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for um, doing this proclamation. Um, people with disabilities need to know that, that they need to use their voice and the perfect way to use your voice is by voting and letting um, your delegates and senators know what your issues are. Um, so thank you for... Uh, receiving this proclamation. Thank you. Mary, how are you? I'm good. God bless you. Just turn this way. Thank you. And we're going to look, we're going to look at Greg. And there we go. There's Greg. Thank, Thank you, you so much. For Thank you. Thank you. Can you turn around and help you Thank you all. We are indeed a city of heroes. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bellucci, um, it's an honor that you have to present a most worthy recognition to a great landmark in our city. Thank you, Mayor. And as the representative of District 3, located right in the heart in the center of Virginia Beach, it's my privilege and pleasure to represent a district that contains probably the most iconic and unique and special landmarks, beloved landmarks in Virginia Beach in our great city, and that is Mount Trashmore. Mount Trashmore is celebrating its 50th, believe it or not, 50th anniversary this year. I have the privilege of reading a resolution to commemorate that very special anniversary and also to welcome an incredible team from Parks and Rec. So please uh, join us at the podium while I read this. 
Whereas Mount Trashmore Park opened in 1973 as the first landfill to park conversion in the world. And whereas the park was the brainchild of Roland E. Dorer, the director of state Department of Health, Insect, and Vector Control in the mid-1960s as a creative solution to the growing municipal landfill, and whereas at that time municipal waste was often disposed of in trenches, but Virginia Beach being at sea level and our water table close to the surface, space was limited, so the plan was to build up, and whereas the last, the last trash was dumped at the site in 1971, and that over the next five years, 640,000 tons of trash were transformed into a mountain at the cost of approximately $1.1 million. And whereas officials originally planned to name the mountain Gull Dorer Park, but during construction, local citizens nicknamed it Mount Trashmore in reference to Mount Rushmore in South Dakota. and Whereas the smaller hill next to the main mountain is named Encore Hill and is half the size of Mount Trashmore, and whereas two lakes were created during the park's construction as dirt was removed to build the mountain, Lake Trashmore, located along Edwin Drive, is the larger, deeper lake and has fresh water, and Lake Windsor, located along South Boulevard, is the smaller lake and has brackish water and feeds into Thalia Creek. And whereas the north side of the mountain, which faces Interstate 264 features an iconic 35-foot Virginia Beach city seal made of recycled foam to welcome vi uh, residents and other visitors. And whereas in the early days, the park hosted soapbox derbies, competitive water skiing, fishing tournaments, wind sailing, and paddle boat rentals. And Whereas a 24,000 square foot skate park opened in 2003 and expanded in 2006 to include a 13.5 foot tall vert ramp and has hosted numerous professional skateboarders, including Tony Hawk. And whereas the park's iconic playground, Kids Cove, opened in 1993 and was built by thousands of volunteers over a five day period. And the project's concept and fundraisers Fundraising efforts were spearheaded by the Junior Women's Club of Virginia Beach and whereas the fully renovated 26,000 square foot Kids Cove opened in 2010 and features a pour and play surface, barrier free entry, wheelchair friendly swings, making it accessible to children of all abilities. And whereas the next project on the horizon for the park is the installation of a hillside playground near Kids Cove which is slated to open in late summer of 2024. And whereas in 2007, in recognition of the 15th anniversary of the city of Virginia Beach's sister city's relationship with Miyazaki City, Japan, uh, Miyazaki's Eco Park um, and Mount Trashmore became officially sister parks. And whereas Mount Trashmore is the most visited park in Virginia Beach, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Virginia Beach City Council hereby commemorates and celebrates the 50th anniversary of Mount Trashmore and urges all residents to enjoy the park's many amenities. And I'd just like to say just a few brief words in addition to that. I had the privilege of going on a historical tour of Mount Trashmore Park with an incredible team of Parks and Recs professionals um, in July. And I learned so much about the park that I didn't know. And I encourage anyone who's interested in Virginia Beach history to participate in a tour like that. And I hope we'll be able to offer it in the future. But what I already knew that so many other people know is Virginia Beach is a beloved, iconic landmark park. It's visited by over a million visitors a year, mostly residents, who, is, it, who just enjoy all of the beautiful amenities. It's uniquely Virginia Beach. And I'll just finally... Um, just conclude my remarks by saying this. I love Mount Trashmore and its beautiful history because someone one day looked at this pile of trash <laughs> and saw something incredibly special. They saw a space where people, community members, residents, not visitors, Virginia Beach residents can connect with each other, where young people could play, where people could fish, people could fly kites, 
People could run and exercise and be part of a neighborhood and be part of a community. All that when they looked at a trash dump. So I just have to think about if we could all be a little bit more like that person who looked at Mount Trashmore and saw a beautiful community of park in a municipal waste dump, imagine what we could do with all the other great things we have in this great city. So congratulations to Mount Trashmore. And most of all, congratulations to the team of professionals and volunteers and community members who have made this park thrive for 50 years. And Mr. Kirschman, I'd welcome you to say any remarks. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Council Member Lucci, members of council. Uh, yes, Mount Trashmore is by far our most popular park. I tell the story all the time when I, when I accepted this job around six years ago and made the move here and I told people around the country, I said, oh, I'm, I'm gonna go be the, be the director of Virginia Beach. The first thing they would say to me is, you're going to Mount Trashmore. It is an extremely well-known park throughout the country, if not the world, because it was so unique at the time. Virginia Beach has a history of being innovative. And this was the first landfill converted to a public park in the world. And that innovation continues today. Uh, we saw it just a couple years ago when we built a 30,000 foot skate park on top of a 5 million gallon wastewater tank at Woodstock Park. Uh, we're seeing it right now as we convert a 100 acre golf course into a stormwater park that's gonna have multiple wins and multiple outcomes for everybody. And I think we'll see, of course, in the future uh, when Rudy Loop gets redeveloped into a public space. Um, all this goes to say that it doesn't happen without tremendous, tremendous public support and that of the body here that has supported this system for over 50 years. I wanna thank Deputy Director Shelley Dodber for being here, our Park and Recreation Commissioner, Hugh Tierney, and of course, our mascot, Barks and Rex. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> I think maybe we'll try to get a zip line to get straight down there. <laughs> hey, but thank you all very much and, uh, you know, some very, very well-deserved accolades. Now go to public hearings. Change, uh, number one, change the central absentee precinct location for the November 2023 and March 2024 elections to Building 23 within the Municipal Center. Any speakers? No speaker, sir. Okay. Next, lease of city property, 2089 Indian River Road, residential dwelling to Haile Harper Krauss. There are no speakers, sir. And uh, last one, lease of city property, uh, 1,143 feet of gravel parking area along Ocean View Avenue to B&J's Limited of Virginia. One speaker, Martha Thoreau. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Martha Thoreau. I live in Bay Lake Pines. Um, I also own a piece of property at the oceanfront. I'm in Bay Lake Pines. That's district number nine. I've been there since 1955 on and off as my father was the site salesman for that area. I grew up in that area and I played at Chesapeake Beach where Bowie is located and uh, it used to be, y'all will enjoy this, hopefully, the trivia is that is the original Chicks Beach. That is where the Chicks hot dog stand was and where people could go down there and play. It was a cute name, and so people think it's cute to name every piece of land along Chesapeake Bay there Chicks Beach, but that is the original Chicks Beach. As you know, I follow local politics pretty closely, and I saw this item, and I didn't think much of it at first especially when I saw the $2,000, but I thought it was $2,000 a month that you were going to rent the city property, the city easement 
to Bowie. By the way, I also knew Stephen Michaels back in the 60s, a nice man. I don't think he'd remember me, but I, I remember him as being a nice man. So I looked at it closer as I looked at the agenda, and the um, thing that jumped out at me, that before 2018, this property, there was no record of it being leased. It was an encroachment. They were using it for Bowie, for the patrons and guests and what have you. And he also owns and leases out of uh, valet and I understand charges sometimes the large lot to the west of his establishment. But this property in question looks like it would hold six to seven to eight cars. The picture shows six, six cars, but I let's say seven. And it wasn't $2,000 a year, it was $2,000, I mean $2,000 a month, it's $2,000 a year that the city is leasing this property to this gentleman. Uh, business and um, less than a dollar a day. There's no record or no information in the in the item that saying how much we used to lease, lease it for. But there, this was it was a portion we leased it for. Now they want the entire gravel spot, and again, two thousand dollars a year. So. Um, I talked to my councilman before, not on relationship to this, but we were talking about parking at the beach and bays, and he even said how difficult it was for him to park nearby to take his children to the beach. And this, again, was before this time. Since then, our councilman, uh, Mr. Uh, Shulman, has provided a porta potty with discretionary income that was left over in the budget to put a porta potty down there by Bowie, and now this parking spot and such. And I was thinking, you know, when you're in politics, you get favors and such. And I'm sure that Mr. Uh, thank Shul you, Martha. Appreciate it. Well, let's make it reasonable for all yeah. all citizens, uh, employees, thank you. city employees, to let them have yep. a parking spot at the beach. Was my thank you. three minutes? I got yep. 13 seconds, Dobby. Um, it says 17. Oh, I'm over. Okay. 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 Now I got to go on to the next one, right? Okay. Not, not, not yet. Okay. Okay. But thank you for coming. Appreciate it. All righty. And that, um, takes care of the public hearings. And now, uh, the script for the speakers before the consent agenda. I want to remind everyone that the city council speaker policy that allows certain representatives of groups to speak for 10 minutes applies only to planning items. All other speakers, whether speaking individually or on behalf of a group, will have up to three minutes to speak on any single item. Speakers are reminded that comments during the formal session of the meeting must be limited to the subject of the item that is being considered by the council at the time you are called. For items placed on the consent agenda, a speaker will have up to three minutes to address any single item. If a sp uh, speaker wishes to address multiple consent item agenda items, the speaker will have a cumulative total of six minutes to address those items. Again, the speaker must limit his or her comments to the subject matter of the items they have signed up to address. And finally, I call upon all speakers and all persons in the chamber to be civil in their discussions and the quorum. Whatever views you hold and wish to express the City Council wants to hear from you and to ensure that all view viewpoints and all persons are respected. The best way to do this for all of us to strive for civility and respect. Okay, do we have um, uh, any speakers? Uh, yes, sir. Martha Thoreau. Um, she has signed up on K24, L2, and L4. And then when we, we have one additional speaker who has signed up just for L3. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, L4 has been pulled though, correct? So um, so it'll be K24, L2, and that's it for right now. Okay. Well, um, L4 has been pulled, so it'll be, held, it'll be heard separately. So this is the Franklin Johnston one I'm speaking on? Uh, number 24, which is the tip fund. And then Franklin Johnston, yes. Okay. 20. I feel a little bit of Barbara Messner in me right now. Um, 
ordinance on the 24, the one million one hundred and sixty four thousand two hundred and ninety nine dollars. That amount was included in uh, the ten million one hundred and forty five dollars and one ten million one forty five one sixty nine that you're bumping over into the next fiscal year. Of that one million one six four two ninety nine was going to be given to this um, management company, and it's going to be shifted over to the two twenty four two thousand twenty four budget. Um, we've already given those people a lot of money, and I, I have read the lease, I've reviewed the lease, and I would ask that this this body. I know it's deferred indefinitely, but. The TIP fund doesn't want to, people at the beach don't want to pay for it. I don't want to pay for it. I'm tired of my taxes going up for all the shiny new things in the city that does nothing to benefit me whatsoever. Uh, the parking there is full all the time. They're making money hand over fist. Somebody is, but it's not the citizens of Virginia Beach. The restaurants and hotels are making out. Everybody's happy at the resort. But if they want them, then they can pay for them. So, I'm moving on because I'm trying to get it in within the right amount of time. L2 so. is Franklin Johnston. All right. On that issue, I'm going to read to you a letter that was sent to y'all dated July 13th of this year from your transition area interfacility inter traffic area citizens advisory committee. And it was signed by Lisa Hartman, the chairperson. Now, I'm paraphrasing this because I'm trying to get it in under three minutes. And so uh, I haven't taken any content, but I am paraphrasing. And it was addressed to the Virginia Beach Planning Commission and then dear mayor, vice mayor, city council, and planning commission. At our July 6th... Excuse me, Martha, you have six minutes altogether. A cumulative time of six minutes for all the items. So right. just take your time. You don't have just the three minutes. You're kicking me down as you're okay. listening to Okay, no, no, just, um, just let you know you have more time. I, I'm sorry, okay, whatever. Okay, okay. keep going. I'm, I'm doing my best, okay? Oh, okay? And you're taking my time. Okay. <laughs> oh. At our July 6th, 2023, committee meeting, the Franklin Johnson Group presented a plan for a zoning change from Agricultural 1 to Apartments 18 on property that lies within the ITA and the ACUS. After carefully considering the options and community impacts, our committee has concerns regarding the ex extreme density and impacts on the precedent it sets for future development. Based on the information provided, the committee recommends denial of this application based on the following. Nearly half of this property lies within the Navy's ACUs, limiting development to one unit per 15 acres. The density, 27 plus per acre, far more than the, than the requested 18 units, and exceeds recommendations for this area. This increased density can have devastating impacts on properties in the area currently zoned agricultural. This high density will set a precedent due to the proximity that can have devastating implications on nearby stable neighborhoods. The Princess Anne Corridor study explicitly identifies the intent to protect the view shed for motorists traveling on Princess Anne Road near the courthouse. The four-story structures will be a massive change from the single-family homes on the adjacent agricultural properties. The height of the buildings is nearly double the intended height for properties in this area. Neighboring property owners are concerned for many reasons. This committee encourages the City Planning Commission to deny the advancement of this request. We request that the developer amend the current plan to reflect the desired intent of publicly vetted documents, comply with density limitations, and reduce the height to be within the limitations to protect the view shed from Princess Anne Road. For me, in closing, my ask is that you honor the recommendations of your committee and hold the developer who's redoing all this to a higher standard here. After all, the citizens are still paying for this new and improved city uh, uh, courthouse and city hall area, and plastic boxes don't fit the image, in my opinion. 
And I've got one minute, right? Can we pause and let me catch my breath for a moment? The final thing is the DeSteff purchase of the property oh, on that, London. Uh, that was pulled, I believe. That one's been pulled, so you'll that, be that speaking on pulled. that separately. I'm speaking on this separately? On that one separately, yes. We'll call you back up for three minutes. That's pulled from the consent agenda. Thank okay, you. Thank, thank you. you. Um, Mayor, we have one other speaker, Michael Resniak. Um, he um, signed up to speak on L3, but that's the only speaker for L3, so I was, would you like to leave that on consent? Okay. Yeah, come on up. Is that correct? Okay, thank you. Good evening. This property that uh, I guess is up for whatever it is, um, the application or the applicant has, how do I want to say it, is, hasn't been very truthful in the use of the property. They've used it prior to November tw of uh, 2022, prior to, I would say, probably 2021. Since this person has occupied this property, they have had gambling machines in there. They have had bike races, dog fights, not, not dog fights, but there have been pit bulls in the property which I owned adjacent and several others around it. Uh, even in the pictures, if you look at it, that's in your report, the property next to it is the one I own currently. They park on my property. Do not ask permission. They put their dumpster on my property. Do not ask permission. They have a food truck that comes there, sells food, no license, no nothing, without my permission or anyone's permission. I don't think the Planning Commission has put enough research into this. They say that the applicant applied for this in November 2022. No. I complained because zoning and uh, I guess whatever it was, neighborhood preservation, kept calling me about vehicles being parked there, trash being there. I went there. I met the person who was very rude. I told him, I said, this trash is not mine. The vehicles parked here or abandoned are not mine. Tires, they are not mine. Who are they? It is the applicants. He had he has been selling mopeds. Other than that, I think that the council should maybe either table this matter or deny it and do better research on this uh, on this applicant and the application. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, that's all the speakers. Okay. Did you want to say something? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excuse me. We got a, a council person who'd like to ask you a question. If you can come back. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Councilwoman Ross Hammond for District Four. And did you bring some of what you're just saying to the Planning Commission? I was unfortunately on vacation and I received this, again, it's my fault as a citizen of Virginia Beach or a resident. I don't follow city planning commission, all the governmental stuff like the, the, uh, the previous person before me, which I should be more like her. I did not know of the previous one when I found out about it. It was too late, but I did get this one, and I, I am here. Okay. Was it used prior to that for any other automated? Because I passed by the area. It was quiet on the weekend. but Forgive me. I didn't understand your question. Has that same property been used for other things, other automated um, areas? You mean other automotive? Yes. It has been, but illegally. So. Each time I have complained, and each time they come out, I don't know, a slap on the wrist or whatever, or I get a false promise of, well, we kind of gave the zoning, so 200 Dorset Avenue yes, was changed from B2 to I1, yet during, I want to say early 2000s, maybe late 90s, someone in the zoning department signed off on this, on this piece of paper. It made it a B2 or gave them a use conditional permit to open up a car dealership. Right. When I called and confronted zoning about it, 
They told me I was re incorrect. I said, I've read, I've read that city plan. I know it. I own properties there. I know what it is. Again, they made me a promise that once this business terminates or this person passes away, it will never be. So we'll see if it keeps it. But no, it, it has been used, but it's not zoned for it. Originally, it was a windows and carpet. I believe the gentleman worked out of there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Very well. Thank you. Okay, we're uh, discussing a potential um, you know, uh, defer okay, consent for deferral on this. Um, Dr. Ross Hammond would like to. We can leave it on consent, but um, put it for deferral until September 19th. Is that yes, okay so with give the rest me a chance to do a further investigation. Thank you. Ready? Yep. To the consent agenda? Okay. Under ordinances resolutions, number one, the ordinance to amend city code section 10-1 regarding exchange the central absentee location to building 23 for the November 2023 and March 2024 elections. Number two is the ordinance to amend city code sections 5311, 5500, 5501, and 5520 through 5529 regarding animals. Number three is a resolution to add student members to the Open Space Advisory Committee, requested by City Council. Number four is a resolution to approve the FY 2024 performance contract with the Commonwealth of Virginia Ray Mental Health Developmental and Substance Use Disorder Services and accept, appropriate, and transfer state funds. Number five, the ordinance to extend the date for satisfying the conditions, Ray, closing an improved portion of right of way adjacent to 204A, 204B, and 202 75th Street. Number six is the ordinance to extend the date to satisfying the conditions rate closing an improved portion of right of way adjacent to 7406 Atlantic Avenue. Number seven is the ordinance to extend the date for satisfying the conditions rate closing portions of unimproved rights of way adjacent to 203 75th Street. The following are ordinances to extend the date for satisfying the conditions rate closing a portion of unapproved right of way adjacent to eight, number 205 75th Street, nine, 209 75th Street, 10, 211 75th Street, 11, 213 75th Street, 12, 215A and 215B 75th Street, 13, 217 75th Street, 14 is 7500 Atlantic Avenue, 15 is 208A and 208B 76th Street. 16 is 210 76th Street, 17 is 214 76th Street, 18 is 216A and 216B 76th Street, 19 is 218A and 218B 76th Street. Number 20 is the ordinance to extend the date for satisfying the conditions race closing a 334 square foot portions of unimproved right of way adjacent to the rear of 317 45th Street. Number 21 is the ordinance to authorize temporary encroachments into a portion of city-owned property and owned as Treasure Canal, located at the rear of 2240 Windward Shore Drive, where a construction and maintain a boat lift, wood deck, wood dock, excuse me, and a portion of a wood pier in District 8. Number 22 is the ordinance to authorize temporary encroachments into a portion of city-owned property known as Lake Holly, located in the rear of 703 Arctic Avenue, Ray construct and maintain a vinyl bulkhead and a timber pier, District 5. Number 23 is the ordinance to carry forward and appropriate 10, uh, 10, no, $10,145,169 to the FY 2023 24 operating budget rate purposes previously approved in the FY 2022 Number 24 is the ordinance to appropriate $1,164,000. $1,299 from the Tourism Investment Program fund balance to the FY 2023 Convention and Visitors Bureau operating budget rate conditional payment to ESM VBSC LLC. Uh, and we are recommending indefinite deferral for that. Okay, open a public hearing on planning. 
<clears throat> Number one is SHJ Construction Group, LLC, Atlantic Shores Baptist Church for a modification of contingent conditions, Raycon religious use and conditional use permit, Ray Car Washing Facility at 1861 Kempsville Road, District 7. Um, uh, recommending for withdrawal, number two is the Franklin Johnson's Group Management and Development, LLC, Adias Vanderbilt Revocable Trust, and et al. William E. and Phyllis H. Sawyer, Keelingwood Apartments, LLC, for conditional change of zoning from Ag 1 and Ag 2 agriculture districts to conditional A, A18 apartment district with workforce housing overlay district and modification of proffers rate, expand and add 176 additional units for a portion of 2737 Princess Anne Road and Eastern adjoining parcel 2520 Ailey Nicole Circle District 2. And number three, uh, this is gonna be deferred till September 19th. Speed Gears LLC, Covington Family Trust for conditional use permit, Ray Automobile Repair Garage at 212 Dorset Avenue, District 4. And that's it, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, the vote is up. Yep, Sabrina. We need a second. I just wanted to make sure I could have comments on um, K1, as I mentioned during the workshop. Yes, you can. Okay. Do you want me to do that now? Yeah, well, why don't you go, uh, go ahead and do that? Sure, sure. Um, so I wanted to, um, for K-1, I wanted to just clarify, um, because I did get some calls and talked to a few people who were concerned about uh, this ordinance to amend um, the code and to change the central absentee location uh, building um, to building 23. I just wanted to make sure that the public was aware um, that that modification would not impact early voting, number one. Number two, that it would not impact their ability to uh, vote absentee ballot at um, Building 14 uh, or any other location. And so um, I did ask the representative from the registrar's office to confirm that publicly here tonight as well. Would you mind, can he come up and confirm that? Yes, you can. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm Christian Logan again, the Deputy Director of uh, Elections here in the City of Virginia Beach, and I am going to confirm your concerns there, which there are none. Uh, this is just simply a move to facilitate the space needed for processing the absentee ballots when they return. So there is no change in any of the uh, areas in which people will cast their ballots. And it will not impact early voting does not impact early voting that will still be held at Building 14, mm -hmm. as well as uh, satellite locations throughout the area. Mm -hmm. Thank you for confirming that. Sure, no problem. I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the clarification. Okay, at this point, the vote is open. Mayor, we need a second. Yeah, okay. I don't, thank you. The vote is open. Uh, ready? By a vote of 11 to 0, you have approved the consent agenda as read by Vice Mayor Wilson. Okay, the only item is four, right? <coughs> okay, uh, now um, item number four under planning, London Bridge Development, LLC for conditional use permit, Ray Bulk Storage at 130 London Bridge, uh, Bridge Road, District 6. We have one speaker, Mark Thoreau. Welcome back. Thank you. It's a tougher juggling this as you can imagine. Um, I was at the Planning Commission meeting um, of uh, August 9th when um, Senator Bill DeStuff was there to speak to the purchase of his property under the LLC of London Bridge Development um, from the City of Virginia Beach to the VBDA. I was surprised when reading through the agenda package to see for today to see that the minutes for that hearing of that item, referenced Mr. or Senator DeStuff as unknown speaker. At one point, someone said, good to see you, Senator, but other than that, the person was not named as he was the representative for the property and the request for conditional use permit from office space to um, industrial, I'd say, um, for the bulk storage. 
was in the news recently that he purchased this property, I think, for $1.2 million, whereas the VBDA bought it for, or the city bought it for $6 million. It was a bad investment on the city's part, and it's been explained away, not by him, but by others, that it was a BRAC thing. And I, my career has been in real estate, and so I've followed, followed that. I've been licensed since 77, and was like looking at it from investment standpoint and wondering why the VBDA keeps on giving our money again, my taxpayers' dollars, your taxpayers' dollars, to certain people and to for for investment purposes. And it was a bad investment, six million to one point something million dollars, and now it's going to be bolt storage with Dominion Power paying a lease amount, and I'm sure probably Dominion Power is paying a pretty penny to store that property. Why wasn't the city the one to rent to Dominion Power? And how long before did VBDA know that Dominion was going to need that bulk space? And were there any alternatives? Which kind of brings me to the place of, I also heard uh, our auditor, Mr. Ramias, or Mayus, speak to the fact that he is answerable to you, that he doesn't have to wait for the city manager. The city manager doesn't ask him to do things. You do, and that you could ask him to do certain audits. So as a citizen of Virginia Beach, I would very much welcome an audit into the BRAC purchases that have been done as a result of trying to protect Oceana and how many losses we've taken, how much we've spent and how much we've taken in losses. Because another thing that the Senator did on a meeting I witnessed online was kind of boasting about buying 37 of these BRAC properties. So I'm kind of thinking, well, who's getting thank, left thank out? Thank you, Martha. Appreciate thank it. You. Time is up. That's all the speakers, sir. Okay, uh, do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Okay, worth. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I move to defer this ordinance request until September 19th. Okay. Okay, do we have a second on that? At the request second. of the applicant. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion and a second uh, to defer. Okay. The vote is open. Councilmember Taylor, may I have your vote, please? Madam Clerk, is this to defer? To defer till September 19th, yes. Thank you. By a vote of 11 to 0, this item, this application has been deferred to September 19th. Okay, thank you all very much. Okay, I think we're ready for appointments now. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> The Collective Bargaining Task Force, uh, Dennis Free, Jake Jacox, Brian Luciano, Max Ganamo, James Wood, Lisa Turner, Terry Green, Steve Cover, Mike Impervento, Rick Broyles, Brad Belton. The Housing Advisory Board, uh, Brian Hackney, uh, the Virginia Beach Cannabis Advisory Task Force, Brandon Hackney, the Wetlands Board, um, Benjamin McFarlane, and I think we're supposed to be reappointing Cindy Hawks White too. That was at the next meeting. She's a reappointment. Whatever you'd like. I mean, Cindy Hawks White. The vote is open. Is that it? Yep, that's it. Okay. Councilmember Henley, may I have your vote, please? Thank you. By a vote of 11 to 0, you have appointed those as read by Vice Mayor Wilson. Okay, great. Is At this point, is there any unfinished business? New business. Okay, we are adjourned to open mic.